Welcome back to My Rubber Heart. Today we are going deep into one of the most fundamental choices in rubber compounding, sulfur curing versus peroxide curing for EPDM rubber. These two cross-linking systems might seem similar at first, but they produce significantly different material properties, influence how the compound is processed, and ultimately determine what kind of applications the final rubber part is suited for. To start, let's look at what goes into each type of formulation and what doesn't belong in them. The cross-linking mechanism behind each system is very different, so the ingredients used in sulfur-cured and peroxide-cured DPDM must be carefully selected. Sulfur curing relies on sulfur atoms forming bridges between polymer chains, creating a polysulfidic network. This means that sulfur-based accelerators like MBTS, CBS, or TMTD are included to speed up the curing process and control the type of crosslinks formed. These formulations also require zinc oxide and stearic acid as activators to improve the efficiency of the sulfur cure. However, peroxide-based curing does not work well with these ingredients. Zinc oxide, for example, can interfere with the free radical mechanism that peroxides use to form crosslinks. Instead of sulfur bridges, peroxide curing creates carbon-carbon bonds, which are chemically stronger and more thermally stable. But for that to happen efficiently, peroxide curing requires the presence of coagents like TYC, TMP, TMA, or HVA2, which help improve the crosslinking density and mechanical strength. One of the biggest things to avoid in peroxide curing is high-activity carbon black with acidic surfaces, as it can decompose the peroxide and reduce cure efficiency. Sulfur curing does not have that issue, so it allows for more flexibility in filler choices. On the other hand, sulfur curing is more sensitive to plasticizers and oils, particularly those with aromatic content, which can soften the compound too much and affect final properties. Now, let's talk about how these curing mechanisms influence processing. One of the biggest considerations when mixing and shaping EPDM compounds is how much heat the compound can withstand before it starts cross-linking. Peroxide cured EPDM is extremely sensitive to premature cross-linking because peroxides decompose at high temperatures. That means the compound must stay below 100 or 110 degrees Celsius during mixing and extrusion. If the temperature gets too high, the peroxide can start breaking down before the rubber is shaped, leading to poor flow, uneven curing, or even complete failure of the final part. Sulfur cured DPDM, on the other hand, has a much higher scorch safety because sulfur does not start reacting immediately. This allows sulfur-based compounds to withstand processing temperatures up to 130, even 150 degrees, without cross-linking too soon. That extra heat tolerance gives more flexibility during extrusion and mixing, allowing for higher throughput in production lines. So, do these differences in cross-linking mechanisms affect extrusion? Absolutely. Sulfur cured DPDM has better green strength before curing, which means that it holds its shape better when extruded. This makes sulfur cured compounds more stable coming out of the extruder, reducing issues like swelling or deformation before vulcanization. Peroxide cured DPDM, in contrast, is softer and behaves more like a thermoplastic before curing, meaning it doesn't hold its shape as well during extrusion. To counteract this, manufacturers often adjust the die design, lower the extrusion speed, or cool the compound as it exits the extruder to maintain dimensional stability. Once the rubber has been extruded or molded, the final curing step is where things really differ. Sulfur cured DPDM can be cross-linked using steam, hot air tunnels, or salt baths, depending on the application. Steam and salt bath curing are especially common for continuous extrusion processes, such as making rubber seals, hoses, and profiles, because they provide fast and efficient heat transfer, allowing for uniform vulcanization. Peroxide cured DPDM, on the other hand, requires precise temperature control to ensure the peroxide decomposes at the right stage. One of the most common ways to achieve this in industrial scale production is through continuous vulcanization. In cable and wire manufacturing, for example, peroxide cured DPDM 
is extruded around the conductor and then cross-linked in a nitrogen heated CV tube, ensuring consistent temperature distribution and precise volcanization. This method is widely used because peroxide curing provides excellent electrical insulation properties and high heat resistance, making it ideal for high voltage cables, railway cables, and industrial wiring. For applications outside of wire and cable, hot air tunnels or press molding systems are often used, as they provide the controlled heat environment needed to ensure proper cross-linking. In cases where peroxide cured DPDM is used for extruded profiles, Curing can also be done in CV hot air tunnels, ensuring that the rubber crosslinks uniformly while maintaining its dimensional integrity. Now that we've covered processing, let's move to final properties and applications, which is what really determines whether you choose sulfur or peroxide curing in the first place. One of the biggest differences is heat resistance. Peroxide cured DPDM can withstand long-term exposure to temperatures of 180 to 200 degrees Celsius, while sulfur cured DPDM starts to degrade around 120 to 140 degrees. This is why high temperature automotive applications, industrial gaskets, and coolant hoses often use peroxide curing. They need that thermal stability to avoid hardening and cracking over time. Another huge difference is compression set resistance. Compression set refers to how well rubber returns to its original shape after being compressed for a long time. Peroxide cured DPDM has a lower compression set, meaning that it maintains its elasticity much better. That makes peroxide curing the preferred choice of, for applications like O-rings, static seals and premium weather seals, where the rubber must maintain its shape over time to prevent leaks. Sulfur cured DPDM, in contrast, has a higher compression set, which means that over time it takes on a permanent deformation more easily. That is why sulfur curing is often used in applications where the rubber is moving or flexing rather than being held under compression. Things like dynamic seals, automotive weather stripping, and vibration dampeners. Chemical resistance is another key factor. Peroxide cure rubbers perform better against aggressive fluids, fuels, and certain chemicals. That's why they are used for fuel system seals and industrial chemical hoses. Sulfur-cured rubbers, while still resistant to many chemicals, are more vulnerable to oxidation and swelling in certain solvents. And finally, let's talk about weather and ozone resistance. EPDM in general is known for its excellent UV and ozone resistance, but peroxide-cured versions perform better in long-term outdoor exposure. That makes them the material of choice for roofing membranes, high-performance outdoor cable insulation, and solar panel gaskets. So when it comes down to choosing between sulfur and peroxide curing, it all depends on what's most important for the final application. If you need high heat resistance, low compression set, and excellent chemical durability, peroxide curing is the way to go. If you need good flexibility, dynamic performance, and a lower cost process, sulfur curing is usually the better choice. Thanks for tuning into my rubber heart. If you learned something new today, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let me know in the comments. Have you worked with both curing system, and which one do you think works best for your applications? See you next time.